In the global political discourse, nuclear weapons and nuclear energy are recurring themes that Western nations weaponize or use as a show of power, depending on their interests. Despite the many U.S. and European pressures on sanctions against the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Persian nation managed to develop its peaceful nuclear development program. To learn more about the subject, we have with us today Sayed Mohammad Marandi, professor at the University of Tehran. Welcome, professor. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. Professor, despite the fact that since the 1950s, Iran started to develop its nuclear program. It was not until 2002 that the West began to worry about this nuclear program. This despite the fact that Tehran signed in 1968 and ratified in 1970 the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. What changed then that attracted so much attention in the West that it began to demonize this program? The truth is that the United States uh, is using the Iranian peaceful nuclear program as an excuse to put pressure on the country. Otherwise, there's never been any evidence provided whatsoever that Iran has or at any point, point had been pursuing a military nuclear program. If you look at the accusations made by the current uh, Israeli regime's Prime Minister Netanyahu, he has been saying for three decades now that Iran is on the verge of developing a nuclear weapon. In fact, almost 30 years ago he said that Iran will have a nuclear weapon in one or two years. And Iran's peaceful nuclear program is closely monitored by the International Atomic Energy Agency. It, is, it has been for years the most closely monitored program in the world. Yet the United States wants to keep it under the attention of the international media so that it could apply pressure on Iran because the United States simply hasn't forgiven Iran for the revolution, for the country becoming independent, and the Americans want to use any leverage that they have in order to weaken Iran and to force Iran to become subservient to the United States. If it's not the nuclear program, it will be human rights, it will be terrorism. They will use any excuse under the sun to put pressure on Iran, and uh, the Iranians recognize that. So uh, on the one hand, the Iranians are more than willing to cooperate with the International Atomic Energy Agency, but on the other hand, the Iranians are not going to uh, accept any deal where the Iranians lose their sovereign right or where the Americans can gain concessions from Iran and the Iranians don't give proportionate uh, concessions from the United States. The nuclear deal, that's something else that had another, another issue that attracted a lot of attention in the international community when unilaterally the U.S. withdrew from the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action imposing tougher sanctions against Iran. Briefly, how has this issue evolved? There are a couple of things I think are worthy of remembering. One is that, of course, when we speak about the international un uh, community, it, is not, it does not mean the United States and the Europeans. The Americans and the Europeans like to think of themselves as the international community. Uh, the international community uh, has no problem with Iran's peaceful nuclear program. It has never had any problem with Iran's peaceful nuclear program. Is Iran's problem has been simply with the United States and its key allies. And that has been the case from, from day one. Uh, the very fact that the United States left the nuclear deal, because in 2015, Iran and the P5 plus one, meaning the United States, uh, the, the Russians, the Chinese, the British, the French, and the Germans, uh, they sat together and signed a deal. And f from 2015, the Iranians were abiding by their commitments within the framework of the deal, where the Iranians gave certain concessions, uh, and uh, the United States would, in return, remove its barbaric and brutal sanctions, which are directed at ordinary Iranians. 
but the United States under Obama never did that. They lied. They violated the deal. And as we neared the end of Obama's presidency, he kept uh, violating the nuclear deal, the JCPOA, increasingly uh, in, a, in a more destructive manner. And then, of course, when Trump came to power, he tore up the deal. But the very fact that he tore up the deal, in my opinion, reveals that the United States really wasn't concerned about Iran's peaceful nuclear program. Otherwise, he would have, uh, abi he would have kept his or at least some of his commitments, and he would st have stayed within the framework of the deal. But ever since that, when the United States left the deal under Trump, the Iranians, for a full year, they continued to abide by all of their commitments. And then only after a year, when it was clear that the Europeans and the Americans were not planning on returning to the deal or abiding by their commitments, did the Iranians begin to gradually decrease their commitments, their uh, the uh, fulfillment of their commitments in order to put pressure on the Europeans and the Americans to come back to the deal, which they never did. So the fault is uh, that of the United States and the Europeans. No one else is to blame. In the current context, Professor, where world peace is threatened with attacks on nuclear plants in the Ukrainian conflict or with threats of possible use of such weapons, how does the Persian nation view the involvement of NATO members in the Russian-Ukrainian conflict when in fact is Russia against NATO? I'll, I'll repeat it. So uh, today, I couldn't hear your question. In the, in the context of the world peace that is threatened by the possible use of nuclear weapons and the conflict between Russia and Ukraine and the involvement of NATO, how does your nation view how could this possible end? How, what did it represent? Well, I couldn't hear the question, but I heard a few words. What I would like to say is that it is ironic that the United States and the Europeans have uh, been um, so hostile towards Iran and its peaceful nuclear program, and, it has, and they have used uh, the Iranian peaceful nuclear pro program as an excuse to impose sanctions and suffering on ordinary citizens in Iran, Yet, as we speak, they are pushing for greater confrontation in Europe and the threat of nuclear war and the threat of nuclear annihilation. So while, on the one hand, they, they constantly make noise about how Iran is somehow a threat and that one day Iran may, in, in, according to their claims, create some sort of nuclear weapon, they are pushing very hard and making uh, extraordinary uh, provocative uh, moves to uh, heighten the threat of nuclear war in Ukraine. We now know that the British are sending depleted uh, uranium shells to Ukraine. Uh, these shells in Iraq have caused uh, a, an enormous rise in the cancer rate. And the irony, of course, is that, again, here, that the British and the Europeans claim that they care for the Ukrainian people, yet the, uh, the, the depleted uranium will cause cancer for decades to come for the people of Ukraine and, and their children and their grandchildren. But, so that shows that they neither care about civilians, their concern is not about Iran's peaceful nuclear program. When they deem it necessary, they will u use weapons that are somehow linked uh, to uranium, like depleted uranium shells, and if they feel the need to impose their will on other countries, they can make threats that could lead to uh, conflict, which ultimately may uh, cause a nuclear holocaust. Thank you very much, Mr. Mohal Murandin, for your time here in From the South. It was a pleasure.